Welcome to uh, another edition of Wood Carving Wednesdays. I'm just gathering up my tools over here. You'll excuse me. And uh, we're about to get into a little wood carving demo. Today I'm going to uh, be carving a piece of white birch, which to be honest is uh, my wood of choice right now just because I really enjoy the material. It's very, it is very hard um, or, or maybe moderately hard, middle hardness. <laughs> That's a word. Uh, but it is very, very nice to work. So in just a moment, I'm going to turn the camera around. I'm just going through here and setting my carving tools up on the bench. Let's see if I can zoom out here. There we go. Zooming out the old-fashioned way. Um, moving the tripod. So I'm just getting my carving tools out. I ended up uh, doing some polishing. I did some bar carving. For the last couple of days, I've been bar carving, um, and I've showed you guys on the podcast already, but, uh, well, actually, the podcast hasn't aired, so I might as well show you again. This is what I'm working on, uh, or just finished up, and so lots of bar carving requires uh, lots of polishing, so if you're going to go from a softwood with lots of dirt, like cottonwood, you're going to end up having to go back to the grindstone, proverbial grindstone, the, really the polisher, and polish up all your blades, um, so that they're ready for um, a harder wood that requires a sharper edge, like the um, white birch. So today, uh, just buttoning this up, believe it or not, that has a coat of finish on it. And that is the dead flat. Um, I took the advice, this is, uh, sorry, I should say, it's by General Finishes. And so this has been a really good product. I really like the way that the finish looks on it. I do the application that Ian Norbury suggests in his, bo in his books and finishing videos, whereby I have two brushes. I have, uh, this is actually a, a good idea from Doug Linker to put the, some of the finish in a small container so you're not dirtying up the whole batch of finish. Uh, but I have two brushes. I apply it wet to the surface, and then I dab it off with a paper towel, and then the extra brush to get all the crevices. Anyway, I digress. That's the way I do the finishing, and I repeat that process three or four times. And it creates this really, the dead flat creates a really almost unnoticeable finish. Like, you wouldn't really know that that had anything on it, but that has two coats of the dead flat. So, very happy with the outcome of that. And I'm going to get a little bit closer again so we can start this demo. Um, I don't really have anything in mind. I know I'm going to be doing a female. Just because uh, the lighter wood... Um, and the and the, just the overall kind of shape. I think it lends well. I shouldn't say that. It lends well to male or female. But um, I like the idea of doing a female. So that's the real reason. Let's just admit it. Sometimes you just would rather uh, do you know look at a female face than a male face. So that's that's today for me. And I'm going to uh, start with a large couch. I'm not going to teach this whole one. Uh, teach this all the way through. But uh, just for folks who haven't tuned in before, you can comment on stuff. You can. Um, ask questions every few minutes or so. I'll check the questions and maybe every couple of minutes I'll try and answer those for you while I'm carving. Typically this runs about 45 minutes. Um, we go up to an hour, but uh, often we don't go to the full hour. So somewhere in that range of 45 to an hour. And uh, feel free to tune in. You know, don't, if, if, if it's something that uh, interests you, you can obviously stay, but tune in and out if you'd like. Um, this is going to be a carving demo. Uh, and so other than that, uh, the tools I'm using range from uh, the largest being this one inch number four, which is a slight curve, all the way to the smallest tool, which is a one, uh, actually two millimeter uh, vayner, which is just a teeny tiny little U. I don't know if the tool, it's going to focus on that, but it's a little tiny U shape and everything in between. So I'm not necessarily going to use all of the tools that are on this magnet strip, but I'm going to use most of them. Um, one new addition that I've been using a lot, although I've used it for years, um, I just haven't had one in, in maybe a year or so since I did the Turing last teaching circuit, was this Riffler. This is just a file. You'll see me using this quite a bit, uh, but with more aggressive teeth. And it's made for, um, excuse me, let me wipe this down. It's made for sanding and finishing the uh, surfaces of your uh, material, but it also shapes because it's aggressive, right? So it's going to be a coarse cutting tool. It's going to remove a lot of material. So I like using that. Um, it's better than sandpaper in, in the middle of the process because when you're using sandpaper early on in a carving, um, then you go to the tool again, you're going to end up with a deposit of sand from the sandpaper 
in the wood and that will dull your tools a little bit more quickly. So yeah, using the, the rifflers and the rasps uh, early on, I recommend. Um, and then finishing with sandpaper. So, hey Janie, hey Heath, looks great. <laughs> yep, pretty much done with it. I'm glad you like it. Uh, so, <clears throat> oh, you're probably talking about the green man. I didn't see that. Thank you, thank you. Um, and so, yeah, I might as well show you one other quick thing that I've been working on today. Um, I'm a little iffy on whether I love it. I like it, but uh, I don't love it yet. It's it's kind of fun though. It's a it's a cottonwood bark carving. Another one, a partial face with all this floral stuff and hair going all the way down. I mean, this is a long piece. I can't pull it out of frame because my tripod's stationary right now. But uh, it's a it's a huge piece of bark. So in terms of length, but all right. I digress. Let's get into the carving. So I'm going to set a timer. The reason I set a timer, um, Parkinson's law, seems like uh, uh, your tasks shrink or expand uh, in terms of time based on the amount you allocate to them. So I find that I do a lot better when I'm timed. It's not a stressful thing to me. It's not about being the fastest carver. It's not about uh, any of that. It's just about um, giving myself a constraint and, and it helps me to focus. Um, and so that's that. So I have a timer over here. I'm going to start that. I've got it set for 45 minutes. And just to show you that I'm setting it, I'm going to start that now. So this is not like the, the rushing that I used to do when I was a kid um, in these live streams where I would just try to see how much I could get done in an hour. It's just, a, it's just a tool to keep me on track. So, And I've got a reference photo pulled up here. It's just a front view. Um, so I don't know exactly how I'm going to use it, but... This is uh, fairly dry. This wood has been dead for almost a year. So there's that. And it is paper birch, for those of you who are wondering. So you don't even have to ask. Um, it's paper birch. Excuse the fan noise. We've got really poor air quality. A lot of the Midwest does right now. I'm sure you guys can relate who are... In the Midwest of the United States, the uh, the pollution in the air is really high. The uh, air index is something like 200. It's between 210 and like down, going down to 150. This evening, it's been a little better. But if you don't know what that means, I didn't know until a couple of weeks ago either. That uh, just means that the air is very bad to breathe in. It's, it's bad if you're healthy. It's bad if you're unhealthy. Uh, so that's why I have the filters running all day in here. Plus, I'm making a lot of dust. I was actually running a Dremel, which is unusual for me. Earlier, um, I just sometimes I get in the mood to use the Dremel very rarely. Um, I went most of two years, this past two years, without picking up a Dremel once, maybe once, if that. Um, and so, yeah. I just don't, I don't love to make the dust, the fine particulate dust, and it's, you guys understand. Part of the joy of carving is just the, the sound that you're hearing right now and the feeling of being in touch with the material, so. Okay, let's see what we got. So we're 42 minutes in. All right. And uh, see if we've got any comments. Nope, just hellos. Yeah, once again, feel free, guys, if you have any questions. I am checking the comments. Or, I don't know, could be comments or thoughts. Another quick update. Um, this video is live. I'll show you this. This project here, um, spending a lot of time. Uh, tail dragger, humming. I'm in the mood f for Dremel. <laughs> So this one um, is a, a new project that's going on the school. You can see it's fairly small, uh, but this is uh, already live actually. Part two has been uploaded. It was uploaded a few days ago now, and uh, very happy with uh, this project for the school. And also this will be featured in my upcoming book. So I painstakingly documented this with video and photo, and I've just kind of written uh, kind of a detailed description of how I came to this conclusion of this, the conclusion being this carving finished and uh, how I'll finish it and all that stuff. So, <clears throat> uh, 
So look forward to seeing that. I'm actually going to put together a short clip kind of highlighting that um, project for the school uh, in a YouTube video soon. So you can also look forward to seeing that probably this weekend. Um, but uh, yeah, very excited about that. Very excited about the way that project turned out. Daryl says, how's it going? Just wanted to say that you've been really raising your YouTube game lately. Great job. Thanks, Daryl. Yeah, I mean, and that's my intention. Um, I've really raised the game in terms of uh, quality of the online videos for the school. Um, that's my main focus, because that's the, the thing that I want to make really, really nice. But I also want more people to know about it. And so I want the YouTube videos to do well, too. I mean, it's, I'm not dishonest here in the fact that I am selling the school, right? So uh, <laughs> I'm using YouTube as a way of showing people what I do and uh, offering free content right? So you can't be mad at that. You cannot be mad at that. So I've kind of outlined a design. I don't always do a lot of drawing on these carvings. I don't love to draw in general, uh, but just for the sake of, you know, chatting and getting an idea of what I'm doing, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll draw. Hey, Douglas Madlock. Hey, Janie. Do you leave the bark flayed out like that on the finished piece? Looks pretty cool. Thanks, Anders. Yeah, I do. I do on some of them. Um, you know, for instance, this one. I like that look. I just figured I'd change it up a little bit today. I might do a little bit of a frayed thing at the edges. I kind of like the way that looks. So what I was going for is about a three inch face and that's about what we got, but I might even shrink it to two and a half now that I'm thinking about it a little more just because, well, let's go two and a half. Let's go two and a half. I just think, uh, yeah, I just think it makes more sense to, to do a smaller face in a piece of wood like this. So I do use a mallet a lot, so you're gonna hear some banging, some knocking. Um, and so, yeah, that's that. I'm just gonna start by defining the bottom of the chin. Okay, and then coming up from beneath. And establishing the top of the head as well. Maybe just above that line. Give myself some extra room. I'm using a walnut mallet that I turned on the lathe when I was a teenager. It's not a great mallet. It's, a, it's too light. I'm not sure where my better mallet is, to be honest. So I'll be using that. Better mallet would be like a lignum vitae or like a... Or vitae. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But it's a much harder heavier wood okay so I've just got get a rough outline there and I'll go a little deeper <laughs> wood carving is not always a gentle process Sometimes it's a good way of getting some aggression out. I've done about as much as I want to do with the big flat gouge for now, I think. I say that and then I come up with more to do. Uh, let's see what we got. Got my tools in the mail, looking forward to the school. All right, Heath, very cool. So what Heath is probably referring to is uh, this, um, you still roughing out with the 25, four millimeter. Yep, the 25 mil number four, yes. So i um, having trouble here removing this. Okay, there we go. Um, suggest the flex cut set, uh, only because it's fairly reasonably priced. Um, you know, t let me qualify this heavily. I, uh, have only ever held and used the tools once in my life and felt pretty good about them for the money. Uh, certainly they're nowhere near the, 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 
the well they're probably near but they're not at the level of quality that the stew buy and swiss made are but they're a fraction of the price something like maybe half the price um they're definitely not half as good they're better than that so yeah i would say it, it's worthwhile to uh invest in, in in a good tool but uh if you can't afford it the flex cut pro full-size tools you'll see brian melton wielding those uh in his videos um he's got a sponsorship with them and uh and that's and he's the one who's shown me those tools so he, he uh he came to my, one of my classes a while back and uh and, and i and i was able to play with those so I don't have a lot of time behind the tools, but I can say that I've, I trust Brian's perspective in that. Um, he's been using them and making a lot of beautiful sculptures with them. So, and they've held up from what, from what he told me. So that's a, that's a huge recommendation because he's doing a lot of big, big, heavy moving of material. So that's a five piece mallet set. They also have, I think it's an eight piece mallet set. That is really, really nice. I recommend that as well. Um, in fact, if you're gonna sign up for the online school, which focuses on prim primarily male, female faces, um, you're going to probably want to pick up the, the eight piece set. If you're an advanced carver, if you're just planning on doing the intermediate projects, mostly the five piece set will do you. And that's a really good starting place. You can really get by with that. But, uh, if you're really trying to up your, up your game, uh, I think it's like a $200 set, 220 maybe for the bigger set. And that's, I mean, gosh, that's literally the price that I charge for a five-piece set of these two-by tools. I, I no longer sell those, by the way, for those of you who have asked. So, um, I just, I just haven't been, uh, had the time to do distrib, you know, and figure out distribution, and you know, folks request them, and it's just another way of getting me to getting out, getting me to the mailbox and away from carving. So, I'm trying to spend less time on that sort of thing. All right, so I'm just outlining the face. Okay. And uh, not much else to it. Right now I'm just getting a, an oval. So looking for that oval shape. It's always very helpful to have an oval um, circle and a half type situation. And I'm gonna start taking the area up top here down. photo again all right so so what I'm doing here I wanted to give you a quick tip on this this is invaluable right like uh, somebody taught me this a long time ago um, there are a number of um, celebrities right um, I don't know models if you will who you know if you search fill in the blank name and then face you're gonna get um, a lot of specific faces to that model right which is important because you need, as a sculptor, you need multiple angles of one particular individual to be able to do the person justice. Or to even learn, as a carver, you need multiple angles. You need a front view, you need a profile view. Um, so, you know, do that, Keep, keeping in mind that uh, there's a lot of garbage on Pinterest. So <laughs> if you're a, a God-loving man like me, you're trying to, uh, uh, you're trying to rid yourself of, uh, of you know, gawking at, you know, partially naked woman. You don't want to do that. So um, that being said, <laughs> I digress. That being said, uh, do so carefully with self-control and, and, and uh, an amazing resource, an amazing resource. So for instance, search this person, Sophia Dorado, and there's a number of multiple angles of their face. Super important and super helpful if you're trying to, um, you know, find a reference photo that's, uh, you know, really, really going to help you. Multiple reference photos. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm doing when I don't have a live model. What's even better than that, what's a lot better than that, is your wife, your husband, your daughter, your friend over actually posing for you. Um, that's just a little stressful for the average carver who's starting out. They're not confident in their skills. They don't want to offend anyone. Um, certainly not the person that you sleep next to. So I get the hesitancy there. <laughs> I'm, not, uh, I'm definitely not a proponent of offending your wife or your daughter, but... You know, at the end of the day, um, 
uh, as a full-time artist, I've kind of made peace with the fact it's not going to look exactly like them. And they have to understand that, make peace with that as well. So you just pick your models carefully. You pick, <laughs> you know, you pick the people you're uh, posing, who are posing for you carefully. Um, uh, let's see. Love your work. Thanks, Stormbringer. Uh, Daryl says, if I'm going to Woodcraft and picking up three gouges. Woo I love that suggestion. That's a great suggestion. Um, okay, so three gouges. I got to think think on that for a second okay so um they said gouges so gouges in particular um i would definitely if you have a knife already i would consider mm, i would probably gosh this is really tough for me i have to think on that Let me think on that just a bit. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Only, it, well, the problem is it really does depend on what you're doing. Like if you're a face carver, you're probably going to want to stick to uh, some sort of a small veiner, anywhere from you know three millimeters, two millimeters, some, somewhere in that range. That's going to be in the mix. You're going to want a large clearing tool, like a like a three or a four or a two. And then, in addition to that, um, maybe mm, that's tough. Either a number nine, some sort of a 10, 15 millimeter number nine, like this, or um, or a 10, you know, 10 millimeter number five, probably one of those two. So you're going to get a similar profile out of that um, or thereabouts. So yeah, those are the tools. Okay. Rick says he's got a, uh, a good evening and he's a newbie and having fun with small stuff, knife stuff works. Okay. Wait, what am I reading here? Having fun with a small knife work, but a very good friend gave me a large set of gouges. Okay. Wow. Bless you. Bless you. Uh, Tail Dragger, you are such... Tail Dragger is such a uh, spammer. I know, he says here, mine always end up with... I'm not even going to read it. <laughs> More practice. Hello, Americans, Eric says. I feel like I should read that in a French accent, but I'm not good at French accents, so I'm not going to try that. Um, yeah. All right, all right. So I'm gonna set in the brow ridge here. I mean, come on, you can't love, you can't not love that wood. You can't not love that wood. All right? You can't not love it. So, all right, I'm going to define the center line here, and it looks like your face is starting to angle, which I'm going to utilize. I like that. I don't mind that. So I'm going to, what is, look at that beautiful center line. <laughs> Flawless. <laughs> but it works, doesn't it? All right. I was watching the, the guy doing full figure Jesus, man. He's doing good. Yeah. Oh, Swedish, not French. Okay, Eric. Very cool. Um, being Swedish is awesome. Tail dragger, any risk of trademark violations with online photos as subjects? Okay, tail dragger, if your issue is trademark infringement, you're an amazing carver. If you make it look so much like that woman, that woman's upset. My goodness, kudos to you. You're doing great. I applaud you, sir. Um, 
that being said, yeah, I mean, if you're a portrait artist and you're uh, maybe you're you're writing a book or you're publishing important content, you probably shouldn't base it on. Yeah, even then, I don't think it's an issue. No, I don't really think it's an issue. I could be wrong. All you lawyers out there, speak up. I don't want to give legal advice. This is not intended as legal advice, by the way. <laughs> not a lawyer. It's never been an issue for me, but could be an issue for you. How was that? Anyway, Eric from Sweden. Hope you're doing good. Love Sweden. I was there um, right before COVID. Actually, initially, as COVID started hitting um, Europe. And uh, it was a very beautiful place. Very much enjoyed it. Um, had a lot of fun. Life-changing experience, seeing how you guys uh, do things. Fika's awesome. I tried to have Fika for about, uh, I don't know, two or three months with my Cloudberry Jam. And uh, no one, it didn't last. <laughs> now I'm back to living like an American, working whatever, eight hour, 10, 10 or 12 hours a day. <laughs> I don't know. Not actually. Sometimes. Um, fair use. You're good. There we go. Um, okay. Yep, yep, yep. Yes, thank you. Just fine. Good. Where do you, where did you go in Sweden? Fika and Cloudberry is the best. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, where did I go in Sweden? Gosh. So we spent, of course, we spent time in Stockholm. I stayed in Stockholm with uh, my, my, my good buddy's brother-in-law um, at their beautiful apartment or condo. It was actually more of a condo. And, and uh, spent a couple of days there. Also spent some time in Foster Gotland area and um, on, uh, what, what was it, 300 uh, hectares or whatever? Hectares, I don't know how to say I'm not, I'm not European. Um, beautiful, huge farm. I think it's a 600-acre farm um sheep and that's where i picked up uh this this beautiful gray fur that i keep in the shop and i sit on it it's so cozy ostergotland gray sheep uh sheep's wool very soft hey savage woodsman i'm not afraid anymore thanks he says no need to fear i'm here okay uh, so are we done yet? Nope. We're not done yet. Certainly not done dropping things. So we're at uh, about 27 minutes going slowly, but that's okay. Sometimes things develop more slowly than others. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the, the timer. I, I mentioned earlier, for those of you that weren't here, um, that I often now set a timer when I'm carving. So I've got 23 minutes left on the clock here. And uh, the reason that I do that, the reason that I have a timer going is not because I think the faster you carve, the better necessarily, um, but the timer keeps you present. Uh, it definitely helps me uh, to, to stay productive. So I like to use the timer. I've used the timer on and off for years, years and years. Um, and so, yeah, it just it keeps you on task. I don't think there's anything inherently good about rushing when you're carving. Um, if anything, I rush more for the videos than I do f when I'm alone and there's a timer going. So keep that in mind. All right, so I'm just uh, starting to shake the head. So using a wood like birch, it's actually pretty dense. It's pretty, it's pretty dense. So you're going to use a lot of force behind the material. Doc says, uh, remind us of what wood we're using. Well, if you can't tell by the bark, it's, uh, uh, it, it's actually um, a paper birch. The words were escaping me of paper. Savage Woodsman says, <laughs> timer keeps you from getting grounded by the wife playing with us for too long. <laughs> yeah, that too that's a very <laughs> that's also a very useful uh thing yeah I, i'll go with that i'll go with that why not um so now i'm going to take a vayner three millimeter vayner and just kind of get the, the hair 
meeting the face, get that happening. Coming down, like so. So I was listening back to some of the early uh, fundamentals of wood carving videos that my online carving school uh, and um, which, by the way, I made a video about this a couple of weeks ago, but uh, I messed up the web link for it. So folks who were trying to subscribe to the school through YouTube, which is the main way they do that, uh, they couldn't. Um, so I wanted to once again say, just <laughs> in case you didn't hear, I fixed the link so you can actually check the school out. I'll post it on this video in the description um, after the fact, but um, yeah. So yes, yes, yes. That's that's the deal. So basically, the school is uh, a subscription service. It's like for the co less than the cost of one of my classes, <laughs> uh, one of my in-person classes. You can get access to the last three years of like you know work that I've been doing, like all of the lessons that I've been teaching are filmed, uh, turned into HD or 4k content and, um, is available there. So it's like, I don't know, 80 something plus videos. Um, and it's all in depth completed projects. So some of them are actually just tips, but mo most of those 80 videos are full, like, you know, actual projects, but Anyway, I digress. I can't speak for other countries, but right now, midsummer is the best time to harvest birch bark so that one can make birch bark crafts. Speaking of birch. Oh, cool. Paper birch is a gift to us woodsmen from Mother Nature. Best fire starter in any woods. Agreed. Hey, Oliver. Yeah, I'm not that I'm a woodsman, but yes. Uh, some, how do you, somehow do you decide how much time for each piece you allow? So how not some? Um, I think I understand that question. Uh, they're saying when you use a timer on your project, uh, how do you know how much time to give yourself? Uh, typically, I give myself an hour. And that's not to say that I get the carving done in that time. That's just a way for me to see how much. It's like a gateway of gamifying carving, too. Like, how much will I get done in an hour? How much can I get done in an hour? It's just, it's just another way of getting data, collecting data um, about how long it takes me to do things. So I, I would say like a small carving like this, I can get a very approximate shape in um, without, a t without much detail in about an hour. Um, why I gave myself 45 minutes in this video? Well, that's because this video is, um, it, it, I've, I'm going to keep it short. I'm not going to make this video. Uh, I say that, but watch it go to an hour just because I have some, some something to point out. But... You know, the goal is to keep this down to about an hour. But I build into it um, extra time. So if I'm, say I'm making a carving, uh, you know, in an hour, I want to try that as a challenge. I'm never, almost ever getting it done in that hour. And I'm almost always doing another additional hour or two hours worth of work and more for the really quickest of carvings, right? Um, so I'm not getting carvings done, especially the complex ones, in an hour, so don't don't think that I'm trying to race the clock here and make you know masterpieces in an hour. So that would just be stressful. Hey, uh, Julio, or yep, I think I said that right. Yeah. All right. So. I'm just using a flat gouge now with a thumbnail, a toenail, I believe it's called, uh, grind on it, which just means that the edges are ground down. You can see that, how it's just kind of rounded. And uh, I really like having the toenail grind um, or fingernail grind, whatever it's called, <laughs> because the edges don't dig in quite as much. You can get away with using a flat chisel more. The only downside is you don't get as clean of a stop cut because the edges don't quite meet. So when you go into the wood, you have to kind of rock the tool back and forth to get an even cut all the way across. Okay. So you'll notice when I'm doing these projects, I'm not doing as much measuring. 
um, as I would do in a, in a lesson video for this for the online school. Um, that's partially because uh, a lot of that information has just become part of me now, I guess, if you will. I don't know. Uh, I, I do kind of know it intrinsically, so I'm not always measuring, uh, you know, oh, is the nose halfway between this point and this point? You know, I'm not doing that in my normal day-to-day -day carving. Although a lot of the great carvers in the world do a lot of measuring. And so I, I think the best carvers in the world do a lot of caliper work. Um, and there's a lot of measurements. And uh, truth be told, for me, uh, at this point, this stage in the game, it kind of takes the fun out of it. I like, I like the guesswork. I like the, um, the, getting the impression of the person in the wood, not necessarily getting the exact person. I feel like you can get a 3D machine to do that. But uh, I by no means hold to that as a rule for other people. I just think that's my own personal conviction. Uh, I like to... Sometimes I will. Sometimes I'll take a quick measurement with my tool. Like I'll use the tool and say I've got this to scale, which I don't, and then I, but say I did. Then I would take that nose measurement here. Stuff like that happens all the time. Um, or not all the time, but, but sometimes. Savage Woodsman says, how you like this smoke in the air sent, by, sent to us by them dang Canadians? <laughs> Greg said in response to my uh, comment earlier, reminds me I got to cut my toenails. I feel like you're an oak leaf, oak leaf wood spirit. Thank you, Dave. Um, yeah, Savage, I don't like the I don't like the smoke. In fact, today I picked up a uh, take you on a little journey here. If I can if I can get that high. Oh, picked up a new furnace filter for my uh, f um, box fan filters that that my gracious friend uh, Yoni Sievers uh, gifted to me. Um, I got a Merv thirteen. I have a Merv eleven in there typically, but that doesn't quite cut it with all this smoke we've got. And it's actually starting to hurt my throat, believe it or not. So, um, either that or I'm getting sick. So we'll see. But so I tried the filter. We'll see how that goes. So yeah, it's, it's terrible, terrible, terrible weather. Alec, do you ever carve full figures? I'm watching with my 10 year old daughter, Edith. She's a painter, not a carver yet. Okay. Very good. Edith. Um, I started carving when I was um, 12, but interesting fact, I guess not interesting. The most interesting uh, to you, maybe Edith is, uh, is that I was a, uh, aspiring painter when I was your age, when I was 10. Um, I was introduced by my sister's boyfriend at the time, Akiana, who is in my opinion, one of the finest young painters. She cer certainly changed her style, but cer one of the better, um, young portrait painters, um, you know, she was doing this miraculously beautiful work as like a four and five year old girl. And I just thought, wow, um, the way that she is doing this, it really is. It's otherworldly. It's like she's been blessed by God with this amazing gift. You know, and of course, she credited, uh, uh, you know, th this sort of um, my mysterious, th th basically credited God for this gift that she had had. And I love that. And I and so I thought I'm going to become a painter. So <laughs> I started painting on shoe boxes and whatever scrap cardboard I could find. And truth be told, I wasn't the best painter. I was a good painter, but not a great painter. And so, and I also just, uh, I fell out of love with it. And when I became interested in wood carving, I found that it was another outlet for me to do something in the arts that was just so rewarding and so um, intrinsically uh, you know, easy for me in a way that painting was not. Because with painting, you have to try and create the illusion of depth. Not the case with carving. Carving, it's just a matter of creating that shape. It's, you're not trying to make the illusion of depth, you're creating depth. So I like that, it appealed to me. But secretly, in the depths of my heart, I'll always love painting. And painting, believe it or not, is a bigger source of inspiration to me in many ways than carving. So more painters probably inspire my carvings than carvers do. And that's just a remnant from being a kid. So I hope you uh, enjoy painting very much and uh, hold on to that because it's an awesome, awesome skill. And it's an amazing art form. Chiseled Outdoors says, watched a recent video with you and Doug about finishing carvings. It's always been very frustrating for me. I bought the beeswax that Doug recommended. Favorite finish so far. 
Yeah. Okay. Great. Yep. The, uh, the beeswax, uh, the beeswax is good. The beeswax, beeswax is good. Um, a couple of problems with the beeswax. Uh, the beeswax does darkens the wood considerably. Um, the other problem with beeswax is that, uh, it does not provide a durable, uh, finish. In other words, it doesn't harden. It's not, uh, it's, it's, it's still not quite as good at repelling dust as other finishes. Um, so, you know, if I'm ripping on this beeswax, why not suggest another product? Well, I will. The product that I use now that I've really liked a lot is a hardening product that has the subtle appearance of maybe a light oil and that it's matte. It absorbs into the wood. It doesn't look highly glossy or candy coated and gross. It's a product that's called Dead Flat and it's made by General Finishes. Thanks to Doug Linker for the idea to put this in a glass container. I mentioned that earlier, but uh, having a couple of containers prevents you from getting them like polluted with uh, dust from your projects. So anyway, yeah, I, I really like the beeswax as a final touch up after the finish is dried, just to kind of maybe make things a little bit brighter if I want to, a little bit, tiny bit glossier. But um, if you're trying to make your carvings last a lifetime, um, I like the water-based uh, polys. I like, you know, even the oil-based polys are good, but they tend to yellow. So I tend to stay away from the oils um, unless I'm working outdoors. Outdoors, um, as far as I know, those oils are the best uh, finishes. Those spar urethanes, petroleum-based products are the best that we have available to us in terms of durable finishes. But if it's an indoor carving, by all means, a poly. I specifically love the dead flat look of uh, general finishes, but there are a lot of dead flat finishes available, or at least a few, and those are those are good. Yep, beeswax uh, on cottonwood bark. Yeah, it darkens the wood, uh, Greg, considerably, which is which is good uh, if you're into that. But if you're not into that, uh, the nice thing about the dead flat finish is that. It looks almost as though there's no finish on it. I'll show you an example really quickly since we're getting distracted. Um, I don't have an example of the beeswax right now, um, but I do have an example of the uh, of the difference between a um, dead flat and a non-dead flat. Okay, which of these has finish on it? Can you tell? Right, probably hard to tell because the dead flat is so neutral and so... Uh, kind of uh, unimposing, if you will. It's not even obvious that it's on the carving. It's obviously on the finished carving. It's a kind of a hint, dead giveaway, because it's, it's complete. But this carving stayed light. You can see the color tone. It's a little bit different than this wood. It's a This is a more red tone wood, which I like better. But it did not lose a lot of uh, uh, value. In other words, it's not a lot darker. And that's why I prefer it on bark over the beeswax. What you can do, though... After the fact, if you like Greg the beeswax, you can actually um, apply the the beeswax uh, after the, the the poly is dried. Um, so that's a great that's a great thing to keep keep in mind. Tail Dragger says Alex Trebek called you running out of time. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Alec. Edith appreciates the info and in, in story. Very cool. Yeah, of course. Oh yeah, no, there's no way I'm getting this done in time. We're either extending this a little bit or, uh, or we're just gonna have a rough in, which is okay, but. So that's me so far. You know, I, I think it's uh, our prerogative to change our minds as carvers about what our favorite finish is. But I do think I'll probably stick with the dead flat for a while. By the way, the idea was given to me by a carver named Carol Levy, who is, uh, a very, very nice carver, a very, very talented carver, I mean to say, and somebody who's put me up in her house quite a few times when I've traveled out to teach uh, her way in central United States. Um, so thankful to her for the idea. She's the one who mentioned that she uses it on her basswood carvings and she doesn't want them to look like they're finished. And to be honest, I've never liked the look of finish on, on carvings. I don't like the look of a carving that is um, shiny. I like the natural oils best. I'm with Greg, the beeswax to me looks really good. But what I'm proposing to you is that the dead flat actually gives you that sort of uh, 
subdued look of an oil, but with a protective finish because it goes into the wood. It strengthens the wood because the finish itself is oftentimes stronger than some of these softer woods like cottonwood bark. So don't be like Grinling Gibbons and do all of your carving work and leave it unfinished. Don't be like me for the first, whatever, 15 years of my carving career where, you know, 70% of the carvings didn't, don't have clear coat on them. So, uh, these are the mistakes that I've made and a lot of others have made. So do something to protect those suckers. Although those Grinling Gibbons carvings, believe, believe me, they're, they're, <laughs> they're finished now. They've got thick coats of wax on them heavy, heavy coats of wax to protect them, which I believe they had to remove because it was caked on. Thanks, Douglas. Mac Prophet from Smoky Mountain Woodcarvers told me that. Oh, about the uh, beeswax? Yeah, no, I've, I've been a long time fan of the beeswax. I'm not hating on that. I say continue to use the beeswax, um, but just for me, as far as my needs, I don't want the wood to darken. I don't want the... Uh, I want the wood to be strengthened, not compromised by the finish. And that's why I'm, I'm more excited about the dead flat poly from General Finishes right now. Every time I say General Finishes, they pay me $55 million, by the way. That's the main reason that I'm saying it so often. General Finishes, General Finishes, General Finishes. No, I'm just kidding. They don't pay me. So... <laughs> Plus, I'm like legally obligated to say if any company pays me to say anything. So, sadly, no company pays me to say anything. <laughs> um, they can always bribe you, though. <laughs> bribe you with free things. They always try and do that. They can't get me, though. The joy of getting free things and criticizing them uh, is it's, it's, it's unlike no other joy because when somebody gives you something, there's this implicit sort of thing of, will you speak favorably about us? And there's something that irks me about that to an extent, even though I think that if a product is good, you should say that it's good, that if a product isn't good, that you're manipulated into saying that. So I always edge toward the side of being critical of a product when I'm given a free product. I know this is not a great selling feature. So those of you who are out there thinking about giving me some free product, I'm going to be honest is all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm going to be honest about your product. I hate when people get sucked into sponsorships and they get all ex fake excited about something they don't actually like. Um, I've seen that happen. It's happened to friends. Don't do it. <laughs> All right. You guys are gracious. I appreciate the time. I know this is uh, a, a rough end. This is not a uh, you know, fully rendered carving, but uh, at least it's a, a good start. Definitely a good start. And that's all we can ask for sometimes. All right, so those of you in the Michigan area, if you're in uh, maybe even the Ohio or, I don't know, anywhere surrounding Michigan, and you're really into art shows, uh, I, usually don't, I usually don't plug art shows, but I am doing an uh, Ann Arbor art show this year. Um, it just it, it worked out so that I'm doing it. And if you're interested, um, Ann Arbor Art Show is the, I believe it's the largest art show in the nation. And for many years, I think it still is ranked num in the top 10. It's often number one art show in the nation. So uh, if you're into art, it's a good show to kind of visit. A lot of people travel from out of state to see it. Come see me there. I'll be there. So I don't know my booth number yet, um, but uh, I'm sure they'll have directories there for folks who are looking. So, yeah, so that's what I'm starting to get ready for. That's coming up in less than three weeks, so I'm... I'm going to start cranking out some work and uh, bring some, hopefully some nice, some beauty pieces to, uh, as the Canadians say, to um, Ann Arbor. Hey, only one knows. Ha, 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 ha. 
Will you be in the Fine Art Concourse? A-R-A-A. -A. I'm not sure what that means. The fine Art Concourse. Uh, other things going on in the shop. Um, I'm beginning um, a project that um, I'm partnering up with Create New Worlds, um, or what, what was called Great New Worlds. I'm not sure that they're formally in existence, but I'm doing uh, some planters. So I've begun the process of that. Um, and uh, they're going to be lotus-based, so the, the lotus plant, which tends to grow in like really crappy environments uh, out from the mud and um, I don't know if it's ashy environments you might, you might know, but, um, anyway, so we're working on that. Excited about that. What is that noise? Oh, okay. I'm not used to noises in my neighborhood. Excuse me. Uh, AA art show is divided by invitations. Divided by invitations. I'm not sure what you're saying. <clears throat> All right. Have you ever carved with a bone as your medium? Um, a bone as my medium. Mm -mm -mm. No. Nope. Don't think so. That'd be cool, though. Yeah, I've done... Mm, maybe once. I can't remember. I feel like at one time as a kid, I played with uh, carving some antler. Yeah, and it smelled awful. That's right, because I think I tried to use a power tool. No, but I've always liked that. Booth number. Don't have a booth number. If, if you were listening, you'd know that. <laughs> it's okay. I don't listen well either. My wife can attest to that. She'll tell me something, and then I'll forget it about two seconds later. Because my brain is filled with other things. Okay. Looking pretty good. Actually, I'm happy with the structure of this one. It's shaping up pretty well. I know it's still early on, but it's got a nice structure to it. I asked a question about the leaf man you just showed. Did you do a YouTube vid on him? Oh, sorry, I missed it, Savage. See, speaking of missing things. Um, oh, I see your comment. Oh, I missed it. Okay, hold up, Alec. That dude with the oakish leaves on him is insane. Thank you so much. I just went back up to your comment. I missed it. How did you get the depth on those leaves? Wow, awesome job, man. Please show him again. Okay, I'll show him again. Um, how did I get that depth on the leaves? Okay, this is a good question. Uh, let me pull it up. Yep, it smells. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, the depth it just takes a lot of time, a lot of Vayner work. This was the tool, the, the project I told you about where I pulled out the Dremel to, to, um, to texture the acorn head. And then I started using it to get underneath some of these leaves. Most of the undercutting was done already. Unfor I mean, unfortunately, right? Like, but also fortunately because I hate power tools. I hate the dust. I hate the, the grossness of it. So this was, um, this was a, a long, arduous <laughs> project. Um, but no, I, I, uh, I, I used a, a Vayner. I use a, uh, a lot of Vayners um, and V-tools turned on their sides to do the undercutting. So I kind of lay the flat side of the, of the V-tool and I come around outline it that way and then I use a combination of knives and other tools to undercut a lot of skews or some some a skew rather I don't use a lot of them but uh, skewed gouge um, which is uh, like a number two or a number three gouge I'll pull that out I can do so without cutting myself you can see that this is great for undercutting that has HRS written over it nicely done what is HRS 
hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a genius. What can I say? I'm like, who is HRS? <laughs> thinking, of, yeah, of course, I go to the worst case scenario. I'm thinking, like, oh, is that the abbreviation of some famous artist who I accidentally ripped off? Figures, man. <laughs> is that like SRV? Or? Anyway, no. But I don't know. All right, so setting up the mouth mound here. Will you be juried at Ann Arbor? Um, oh, will I be the jury? No. Uh, by the way, my timer went off, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start for 15 minutes. Um, no, I have been I have been in the jury before. Um, I juried probably 20, 2016 or twenty seventeen um, for the guild, and that was a very fun experience. I mean, there are just like tons and tons of applicants, and it's really hard to choose who goes in, who doesn't, because there's a lot of amazing art. And I tended to be the kind of guy who was like, oh, we should let this person in. <laughs> and they would be like, are you serious? <laughs> no. So um, there was just, there were so many cool things and the standard is so high. Um, but, uh, but that's why we like the show. That's why it's a good show. Um, although, you know, everyone has their taste, so maybe that, that show doesn't have what everyone wants. Um, yes, but, uh, I have had the privilege of being a judge and a juror, um, on multiple occasions at multiple events. And, uh, it's always, uh, it's always a really anxiety provoking experience. Cause you know, if you're doing a show with a lot of talent, uh, it always kind of feels icky to just give the award to somebody who, um, you know, might not be more objectively gifted than the next person in the, in the event. So. You can come in if you want. I'm still going live, but you can come in. I'm going to show off my cute wife for a second. Look at her. Look how cute she is. Hi. Okay, anyway. Um, I'm just going to assume they're saying hi, Annalise. Um, can you tell who she is? Me either. Oh, no, I can't. <laughs> I don't know who it is. Do you want me to read these I have a live model, you? folks. It's so much better. How do you see their comments? There you go. Scroll. Will you be juried at Ann Arbor? Oh, I did answer that. Yep. Oh. But what's the next one was something about food? Someone said best art show food too. Oh. They're, they're saying Ann Arbor has. Yeah, food. yeah, it's definitely one of the best. I would say in the Michigan area, Arts, Beats, and Eats, and Ann Arbor, the two ones that I look forward to food most at. There are some shows that really need to work on their food game. That's for sure. I won't name them, but. She heard your timer go off. <laughs> Sav <laughs> Savage Woodsman was, I was explaining why I use the timer. And the, one of the guys said, let's be honest, you use the timer so your wife uh, <laughs> gets more of you or something uh, in the afternoon. Someone else said you're in trouble now. The boss came looking <laughs> for you. <laughs> that was him, Savage. <laughs> he put a heart at the end. He's being nice. <laughs> but you guys are right. Help. That's not I'm blinking. true. I just got home. I'm blinking twice. <laughs> yeah, she did just get home, so that means... All right, guys, see ya. <laughs> just kidding. I did have some leftovers. That was good. Oh, the pasta. For lunch? Yeah. Thanks. Mm, just in case folks wanted to know. Some Douglas waves. waves. Sure, your timer. Oh, I love that. Douglas Madlock says hello. I'm assuming to you because I've been on here. Cut your <laughs> finger if you need help. We can't see you blink. Oh Cut your God. finger. That's the lamest. <laughs> I have to maim myself. Can't there just be like a hand gesture or something? Um. 
Yeah. So. Wow, you should be the moderator more often. It's nice to not have to look at that thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was missing all. I was missing comments earlier. So. Okay, so I'm setting up the mouth mound. Let's see, what do I have? I added 15 minutes to the clock, so I have 10 minutes left. So this will be a proper one hour warm up. So you're getting a taste of what I do when I'm in the shop alone. Cameras are off. Um, Someone said no secret Carver's Coke? Yeah. Oh, Coke. <laughs> yeah. I can have a secret card with code if I want. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, if you notice that I'm carving faster, it is because um, I'm trying to impress my wife. Well, stop reading then and just keep working. <laughs> Fair enough. Someone said at least you have pants on. What? <laughs> Don't read all the comments. <laughs> oh. Especially from Tail Dragger. <laughs> That guy's a loose cannon. <laughs> Someone said she's your wife now. You can stop trying. Yeah, fair enough. So I was telling the folks in the live stream a few... I don't know if it was on a live stream, but you and I, you were clued into the fact that I liked you through one of these, right? Right, yeah. Because wasn't I doing a demo, and then I said, all right, guys, so I've got to, I'm playing this gig, or whatever it was, I was sing yeah. singing at an open mic night or something, or whatever, and I was saying, you know, it's got to be good, because there's a cute girl coming to see me. Yeah. And you were watching that live stream. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, that so. is true. It was sweet. Yeah, just kidding, never stop. That's good. That's good advice. Because I never would have known otherwise. Mm -hmm. Well, now I'd like to publicly say I've had enough. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't hit me. <laughs> Love you. Uh, she, she, guys, I flinched. You can't see it, but... Oh, my. Not true. I'm blinking. I'm not funny. I get it. <clears throat> well, she's an ugly woman, but hopefully she uh, shapes up. I don't know what... Oh. Yeah. There's a lot of wood to remove on her. What's that? I didn't say anything. Oh. All right. We're coming down to the wire. This picture is not all that helpful because, yeah, that's better. Actually, I have you here. I'm going to use you. Too many sharp, sharp objects in that room for teasing. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's true. You can just scroll Someone else said, oh, wow, well, I remember that, and now you are married. Congrats. No way. Oh, someone said you just call your wife ugly. <laughs> he was talking about the carving. Yeah. I knew someone was going to make that joke. <laughs> oh, man. The internet. You got to love the internet. <laughs> We're going to teach you how to moderate, not read all this comment. What? I felt like that was a good thing to read. It's oh, funny. Man. Fair enough. If you like it, that's good. I tend to ignore the ones that I don't. No, the, and the person just said, I sure hope so. They just didn't understand. Oh. So you're providing clarity. Oh, my gosh. I don't think so. I think the person is trolling us. Although, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if at this stage they didn't know I was carving a woman because it's, uh, it's pretty early on, so. Blind, colorblind. Black and like white. Oh, it turns out they were trolling us a little bit. Yeah, of course they were. 
not. Are you new? Are you new to the world of YouTube? Yeah. Well, let me just tell you. Half of these people are robots. <laughs> just kidding. I think I'm kidding. Hopefully. Now that's how I put myself to sleep at night. All the mean comments. I just tell myself the robots. Mm. <clears throat> how much time do you left? Um, five minutes, 49 seconds. I feel like you need to do something with her lips. I feel like I didn't ask your opinion. <laughs> no, okay, well. This is why you should not inv invite your wife <laughs> to watch you carve. <laughs> All right, I'll do the lips. I'll do do you usually lips. do that last? No, no, you're you're right. It's probably pretty close to time to get them at least roughed in. There's no real order. I mean, there doesn't have to be. I mean, generally speaking, you start with what sticks out the furthest. Mm. And so, yeah, the lips would be pretty high on the priority list as far as things to do early on. <laughs> <laughs> Oiling my typing fingers, robots. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> mm, yeah, we gotta really move these lips um, up, up higher. Yeah. <laughs> All Someone better. said that they would. I would carve every carving about her. Aw. <laughs> yeah, same. That's why I end up carving her in most of the carvings. She's most of the females that I carve an accident. And uh, sometimes on purpose. Okay, so but let's let we don't want her to get a big head, so <laughs> she's funny, bro. Yeah. Can we get that side profile? Thank you. Yeah, this the setup is just so different from your face that it's like well, we can definitely use parts. You married your muse, Picasso, much? Uh, definitely married my muse. Well, we're a talkative bunch today, aren't we? So, what do you usually talk about during these? Um don't mess up is the first p bit of advice that i give no um you just answer questions i answer stuff? questions i talk about stuff that pops into my head um uh, we just talk about carving anything to do with carving hey. just talking about finishing a little bit more today talking about setting up the face oh Ooh. look at that i lost her lip but luckily <laughs> i held on to it so i can glue it back on he passed me that glue right there please yeah thanks do you can read that do you think chip carving is a good way to start out for a beginner um i mean it depends on the beginner if, if he or she is really into chip carving then of course yeah it's an awesome way um if you're like me you have you you know the idea of chip carving is not interesting at all to you uh it's a horrible way of starting so you know it just depends on your interest level can you uh ask me that, that glue as well right so it's like it's really depending on the person. Um, I mean, chip carving is one of those skills that you, you end up utilizing in your work. Um, like, you do a lot of chip carving and, and face carving. So I could see from, a, from the stand, purely the standpoint of building 
knife skills, I think it's really helpful to play with it at least a bit. Um, because you're really learning stop cuts, you know, I probably could, could use to take a chip carving course or really dive into chip carving more, but it just doesn't, it doesn't interest me that much. And so I never really put that much effort into it. Should you explain what you just put on there to... Oh, so I use an accelerant, uh, super glue, and then an accelerant, which is just a spray um, that dries things quickly. She has to be funny to keep up with Alex Madness. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> is that a type of birch? It is. Yeah. Um, I'll look at the question so you can keep carving. Yep. Well, yeah, so you have to tap it so that uh, you can... Yeah, I okay. can see them. Okay, cool, cool. Um, yeah, it's paper birch. Which I know... I'm fairly sure that paper birch shows up all over. Uh, so... Especially, like, cooler climates... Um, I know in Sweden there's a lot of birch. Um, in northern United States there's a lot of birch. The person who asked the chip carving question is new to carving. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, then, yeah, if that's something that all... The fact that you even brought it up means that you're probably interested in it. Um, and, I mean... It's a beautiful art form, for sure. So if that's if that's interesting to you, yeah, it's a great way of learning the cuts that you need to, to, to learn um, to make a chip carving, though. If that's not your interest, you know, you're going to be in the wrong territory, I guess. Yeah, I keep habitually checking the phone, even though you're here. Because of... It's just become a habit. Someone asked, does this piece of wood differ from silver birch? Seems a lot whiter. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I haven't done a ton of carving in silver birch, so I can't speak to that. Uh, but, yeah, well, paper birch is very light. This has some spalting, which is some discoloration in the wood. So that strong, dark line is going to be a little distracting. You can bleach it out. There, There's two-part bleaches, uh, wood bleaches, that are the most effective at removing um, stains like that, they don't always work, but definitely lightens the wood. So I may try that on a, a sample piece like this, just, just as an experiment. But, um, yeah, the, the silver birch, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's a little bit softer. I know aspen in general, um, like trembling aspen, birch is in the aspen family, but trembling aspen is going to be a little bit softer than, um, silver birch, paper birch from what I've heard. Is the birch dried or do you carve it green? Yeah, it's it's at this point it's pretty dry. I mean, it's been it's been down uh, since before Christmas. Uh, so, what is that? Nine months, eight months. So yeah, it's been it's been dry for a long time. So it's mostly it's mostly dry, especially being a small branch is gonna dry quicker. But yeah, definitely green wood is a lot easier to carve. It's just a little bit more challenging to, to finish Greenwood. Someone, they were explaining that they're from Northern Ireland, so they haven't oh, cool. come across it. Oh, okay. Interesting. That's kind of surprising. But you carve in lots of wood, so. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, um, wood is... Uh, I mean, there's, there's so many different types of wood that can be carved successfully. Uh, the main thing is learning how to sharpen your tools. I mean, if you have really sharp tools, you can make pretty easy work of a whole lot of different types of material. All right, the timer went off. Uh, there's so much more we could do to this, and I'm, I'm going to end up finishing this. Maybe I'll make a video about that and post it as well. But we got a little rough in, nice little block in. So from us, sincerely, thank you for watching. Appreciate it, and enjoy. Um, yeah, the rest of the channel, if you haven't already checked it out, check out the videos I've got posted up now. And check out the school if you haven't already, because the school is the best way to um, witness the in-depth instructional content to get all the, the, the goodies. So, all right. Check it out. Bye.